Hina, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Mazakalakhir. The hardest part of navigating a divorce, I think, are the children. Because if you're parenting th- with children, um, you're always wondering how are your children managing the situation? How are they managing their emotions? How are they navigating the whole process? And while you yourself are feeling emotions like you know, confusion, and sadness and grief and all those things. And, and your chi- you know that your child is also experiencing those things too. So Hina, I know that you have gone through a divorce yourself. Uh-huh. So you have firsthand experience. So That's I, right. I want to ask you, how do you parent through a divorce? It's uh, um, such an unfortunate experience to actually have to live through a divorce. Very challenging. It attacks your self-esteem, your sense of self-worth. And I know that subhanAllah, we have started discussing and we've had started having conversations in our communities about divorce and really trying to understand that uh, or destigmatize that experience of divorce. But what usually doesn't get addressed are children Mm -hmm. who are a big part of that process. They're a big part of that family that's falling apart. And um, the age ranges of children can be impacted so differently. Mm -hmm. Um, Alhamdulillah, I've got three kids. And uh, at the time of my divorce, the, the eldest one was 12. And I remember significantly just that, you know, like researching the process extensively, Mm -hmm. you know, how do you talk about it with your kids? What are the right things to say? What are the wrong things to say? So, yeah, alhamdulillah, you know, um, there are ways to safeguard or to minimize the damage or the risk. It's not an easy conversation like this one to have. It's not an easy Mm -hmm. conversation because we're heartbroken already as it is that in our communities that families are falling apart. But at least I'm hoping that by talking about this today, at least we can help set people in the right direction, parents, Mm -hmm. to give them the opportunity to, you know, really protect their children in that process. Mm -hmm. So let's think through, let's say someone is going to going through a divorce or about to go through a divorce. How do they have that conversation with their children? Um, I want to, I'm going to keep it like, I just want to make it very succinct here. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's three S's. Keep it simple. When you discuss the issue with your children, Mm -hmm. um, when you and your partner decide to get divorced, there are lots of things that happened. There's layers and layers and complications. People don't end a marriage because one small thing happened. Like most Mm. people, most relationships have come to an end because of years and years of hurt and pain and challenges and difficulties on both sides. But when you bring this into front in front of the children, you want to keep it as simple as possible. It's not their space to understand what mom and dad went through. It's not their job or their responsibility to get into that nitty gritty of why and how. So keep it simple. Keep mm-hmm. the message very united, but very, very simple. So what would you say? Like, give me, a, give me an example. You know, sitting the children down together. And again, this is very different. It has to be age appropriate. Okay. But sitting the children down and just giving them that message in that, in, in that limited form that, you know, mom and dad have been working on uh, their relationship. Things are not going the way that we want, and we are thinking it might be a good idea or it might be better for us not to be living together. Mm-hmm. Um, having said that, let me clarify that a lot of children are already aware that something's going on. This is not mm-hmm. coming out of the blue. Children who are sitting in front of their parents with parents having this conversation have probably heard a lot of argument in the home. They've heard a lot of fighting. They've seen a lot of crying. They've seen a lot of emotional distress already in their home. Mm-hmm. So the conversation is not coming completely out of the blue. In some cases, children are actually relieved. Mm-hmm. They're fi- oh, finally, you know, like they've actually been waiting for this because they're so tired of the toxic environment in the home as well. So just kind of coming back to my three S's, mm-hmm. keep it super simple. Okay. You don't need to overwhelm them with too many details of what's happening. You just need to let them know and let, them, let it all sink in. The second thing is you want to emphasize to the children that they are safe. What is the first thing that happens when we get bad news? We worry about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And children are young. They're impressionable, Mm -hmm. right? So their biggest fear is, what about me? Do I have to change my school? Are we selling the house? (laughs) Um, All of these are natural and they're normal conversations. It doesn't make them callous or unsupportive. Mm -hmm. It just makes them kids. It makes them human. That's their developmental stage, right? They're worried about themselves. So safety. Mm -hmm. You know, you're safe. We love you. We're here for you. You know, that that safety that you're going to create. We are, the, we are in our home right now. We're figuring it out. A lot of parents I've noticed that when they have this conversation will give their kids too much information. And that's why I said, keep it simple, right? They're going to be like, you're going to be living here and we're going to be moving. The first conversation actually should be as simple as possible. And then you want to build a sense of safety for your child so that they don't feel overwhelmed and swept away in all the massive change that's going to happen. And the last thing is being supportive, Mm -hmm. supportive of the family unit. So your children, 
you know, we're here for you. We're always going to love you. We're always going to be your parents. And now hold the mic, supportive of each other. Mm -hmm. I know that this doesn't go well when I say this in (laughs) therapy as well, because, you know, you've come to a divorce situation because there's a lot of animosity. But here's where you've got to put that aside when it comes to being parents. Your parenting relationship has to supersede your own personal experience. Is it possible to do that? Like, have you seen it happen? I mean, you deal with clients, so. (laughs) (laughs) It's not easy. And I'm not going to make it sound like fluffy and, yeah, you should do it and it's possible. Of course, you've got your own emotional injury. Of Mm -hmm. course, you're dealing with a lot yourself. But yes, it's possible. Make sure as a parent, if you are going through a divorce and, you know, you're going to obviously you are your children's primary support system Mm -hmm, through this. mm -hmm. You know, they're not they're not in therapy. They're not looking. They don't have they haven't been talking to people for months and looking for advice and support. So you are their primary caregiver and their primary support system. And if you are their primary support system, you need to be in a healthy place. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you have a strong support system around you. Make sure that your mental health is in a good place. If you're still struggling and suffering, make sure you're in therapy. Now, there's, it's not like some kind of finish line that, okay, well, when you are healthy, only then speak to your children. It can be a work in progress. But as mm-hmm. I said, you have to be supportive of your, um, you know, the partner that you're uh, getting divorced from. No negativity, no shaming, no blaming. I know it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering how this could happen in practice. I, you know, I, I don't see it happening because, you know, yeah. many divorces, most divorces, they're there are, ugly. An, yeah, there's a lot of animosity. <laughs> lots right? of blame, lots yeah. of hate. Get help yourself. Mm-hmm. If your situation, if, you know, if a person's situation is uh, tough and challenging and there is that level of hate, anger, and animosity, mm-hmm. you can get help for yourself. You know, you can, and th- therapy is the best place to do that. Go to a therapist and work yourself through that divorce. Work yourself through your own failures and your pain and your suffering because you're allowed to. Mm-hmm. You're allowed to have emotions and feelings as you're going through this incredibly difficult stage of your life. But when it comes to your children, you've got to put a different face on. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make you fake and it doesn't make you artificial. It makes you a good parent. Mm-hmm. When you show up for your child and you don't badmouth your ex or your partner, you know, no passive aggressive comments. <laughs> you know, I've, I've had people saying to me to my face that I've never said anything negative about their dad. And then literally five minutes later, they're on the phone talking to somebody, the child's in the room, and they're like, yeah, he did this and he did that. Your kid's still in the room. Mm -hmm. You got to be very mindful of the language that you're using, the words that you're saying, because fundamentally, you got to remember that that child's gateway to Jannah are both parents. Mm -hmm. Not just and, you. and you know you're you're parenting through that through that divorce, right? It means that you are both parents, and you're both going to have to navigate rules and responsibilities, and and roles, you know, at at the same time, so that your child can feel safe and secure. Yeah. So you have to keep that in mind as well. Right? I think, and and at this point, you know, Alhamdulillah, we have the guidance of Islam that when we are fulfilling the rights of uh, our children uh, correctly. You know, being honest uh, with our children, being supportive of our children, teaching them uh, ethics and character. Like those are all qualities that should be aligned in all families. And if they are not, and sometimes, you know, that is the reason for divorce. SubhanAllah, the hardest thing on the children is not the divorce. It's the behavior of their parents. Hmm. Um, We hear this myth that, you know, um, that divorce is hard on kids. Stay together for the sake of the kids. The kids, it'll destroy the children. Mm -hmm. Divorce won't destroy your children. You will. Mm-hmm. Whether you stay together in the marriage or whether you are an unhealthy parent after the end of the marriage, it's your responsibility. They're an amana from mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have been entrusted with the, not just the physical wellness. You're not just supposed to provide for your child uh, financially, you know, feed, uh, fo- uh, give them food and clothing. And it's, that's not just it. It's that emotional support, the character building mm-hmm. that you're focused on. Mm-hmm. And undoubtedly, Sophia, when marriages end, it's, it's ugly. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a broken, shattered, messy situation to be in. And it's not easy. I mean, I've lived through this, so I can tell you that it's not easy to, you know, you can't just put on a pretty face and say, yeah, daddy and I are going to be fine and everything <laughs> is great. You're broken on the mm-hmm. inside. Yeah. But navigating for that, that for your children, that's your responsibility. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you to be in that situation, exemplifying that character you know, being there to show 
that this is what Allah would want of me in this moment, mm -hmm. that's the emphasis and the focus. And uh, inshallah, you know, like if you're focusing on that, that what would Allah want from me in this moment? What, did, mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what would Allah say if I stood bef uh, before Allah on the day of judgment and would like, you know, that this is how I have presented my ex or this is the way that I have parented my children through this? What would Allah want from me? Mm -hmm. Hina, what kind of behavioral responses do you see in children who, whose parents are going through a divorce, either, you know, in the short term or in, in the slightly longer term? Uh, you know, my ex and I struggled with this divorce conversation for a very long time for the sake of our children as well. And during that time, one of the things that I did discover was that the trajectory of a child does not change whether the parents are together or not. So children who are bound for success, you know, they were in that direction of success, they were hardworking they were moral, they were ethical, they stayed on that trajectory. And children who were on that downward trajectory, they were struggling, they were into smoking or drinking or relationships or drugs, or they were just, you know, they were really having a hard time with themselves, mm -hmm. continued on that trajectory. Mm. So the key component here is not that one, you know, the dreaded D word. That's not mm. the key component. The component mm -hmm. is what kind of parenting are they receiving? Mm -hmm. As a parent, you know your child. So you look out for behavioral change. You know, you look out for things that is their language changing? Are their habits changing? Are they, as a person, you know, are they not interested in things before? Have they become excessively irritable? Have they withdrawn completely? And you know your child, so you will mm. also be able to notice behavioral change. Um, for parents who have children in school, I highly recommend that going through the process, let the teachers know, you know, mm. let, let the school know. It's, I know it's private, but alhamdulillah, you mention it to the teachers to keep it personal and keep it private. And inshallah, bin Allah, they respect your privacy. But just having that extra set of eyes, teachers, instructors are that extension of, um, you know, your parenting. Mm -hmm. they, they are there. They're seeing your children when they're not at home. Yes, they're part of the community. They are. Yeah. And so your the teacher, the child's teacher will be able to tell you about any kind of behavioral change that she or he might have noticed. It's very important to have that extra set of eyes outside the home. So just kind of building them into the team and saying, my child is going through a lot of transition. And I would really appreciate it if you'd keep an eye on them. Let me know if you notice any kind of behavioral change or anything that you feel is unnatural or abnormal for my child mm -hmm. so that I can address it early. And that's what you want. If you notice any form of change, you want to be able to address it early and don't shy away from getting help. Um, I know that, you know, sometimes it's mom versus dad so that if dad is speaking to the children, they feel like, oh, we're leaving mom out of this conversation. Mm -hmm. And if mom is speaking to the kids, they feel like dad is being left out. So you want to essentially avoid that tear of like taking sides. And sometimes that third party is the right person. You know, mm -hmm. the child sits down and speaks to a third person who is professionally trained in helping children transition through a divorce. It's beautiful because now they don't feel guilty for picking a side. Now they mm -hmm. get to really hold space for themselves and just be with their feelings and really, you know, just navigate that experience as an individual versus, you know, mom is feeling like this and dad is feeling like that, alhamdulillah, it just really alleviates that pressure. Hina, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, let's hope that, you know, children develop that resilience to be able to get through that and that the parents um, show the right example yeah, for them. Inshallah, well. ameen. Thank you for that. Our videos reach people all over the world. We hope you will seize the opportunity to share in the reward from God. Please support us today. <laughs>